Mr. J. Hill, let's get this straight. Uh, good, I can't even say friend just yet, but good associate. Definitely every time I've seen this girl, this young lady, is always good energy. Um, of course, I'm Mr. J. Hill, special guest in the building. A lot of you guys in Baltimore, of course, know who this is. The Willie Queen. <laughs> it's popping. How you feeling, first of all? What's up, what's all? up, Yo, um, first of all, thank you for even reaching out saying you wanted to do the interview with me. No problem. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm always willing to show love. Yo, and um, speaking of showing love, right, since, like, I, like I said, the friend word is, is such a, a strong word to hold exactly. on to, right? So you can't really just throw it around. Exactly. And I don't mean no, no harm by saying not a friend, but not a friend. We, will, we will get there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people be be scared to be like, just say what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to claim a title that's not there yet. And there's nothing wrong with growing to be there. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong being be associated. Yourself. You can yeah. only be real. You feel right. what I'm saying? You can't sugarcoat stuff in life nowadays. Because 100%. when you start sugarcoating stuff, you be like, oh, well, he told me he was my friend. <laughs> but he told somebody else that wasn't my friend. We just yeah. associated. So, right. you feel me? Like, people take stuff the wrong way but I ain't taking no kind of way but now I appreciate you uh just one because and not just you a lot of uh the local celebrities in the city show me love and I don't know the reason why maybe they see them doing my thing but you always show me love it never was like I me mean, owe twenty dollars and because we didn't even right. really know each other but right. I, like if I dm you you will hit me back right. like if I follow you you follow me back you know what I'm saying like that right. and I always show my appreciation to like the local celebrities because is people out there in my position that can get in touch with y'all. Right. You get what I'm saying? And it's not y'all not doing it on purpose. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like it's people that follow me that I might not see. But now I understand how hectic this shit be on social media. Exactly. Shit, right? <clears throat> but that's why I always show my appreciation to, to all of y'all. Like cause you ain't had to hit me. And right. I appreciate that hundred percent. Right. Like I don't want no nobody to think I'm bigger than who I am. Like, I right. appreciate everybody. You deserve here. everything that, that you just recently, congratulations on, you feel me, your radio station. Like, you deserve it. Like, since day one, since I met you, you feel me, like, through Canaan, like, you always been positive. You always seen, chill, seen what you was heading for, and you definitely got there. So I definitely congratulate you on that. Man, I appreciate it, man. It's crazy that we talk about that because it's like, you recently was shot. Yeah, I and recently we, was. We always talking about um, just in the city how fucked up it is. And it's like, a nigga don't have to do shit, and it could, it could come to you. And like, before we even get, before we even get to that, like, your situation or whatever, I wanted to just talk about a little bit about your background and where you from, and you get how you got into bikes and things like that in the cities, in case that people that don't know. All right, so if for the people who don't know, you feel me? My name is Willie Queen, you feel me? I started off actually riding pedal bikes. Mm. And the pedal bikes, it wasn't, once I got to a certain level, you get what I'm saying? I just felt like, all right, listen, I, I got to get something better than this, you feel me? <laughs> like this, I'm doing too much dirt bikes. Everybody, dirt bikes was always around my neighborhood. Like, you feel me? I grew up in Lexington Terrace, you feel me? I'm from Baltimore City. And it was like, that was one of the main things down my neighborhood was dirt bikes. Mm -hmm. So. That's I grew up around nothing but boys. You was up um you was at Lexington Terrace before they tore down? Yeah, I was so, actually at Lexington Terrace before these new buildings right. is there. Like right. when right. they right. blew the from, uh, Murphy Homes. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm from a Colognes. I tell you I'm not from not from Murphy Homes because it's two right. different places. Right. Like so like I remember the old Lexington Terrace. Right. Before they blew it up and shit. And it's crazy because I actually remember it too. Like I don't know how old I was, but I was living on uh, Fremont Street, and when they was actually about to blow the buildings up, I remember me sitting on my aunt neck, and it is like when they blew them up, it, the impact like bust a lot of people's windows. Like a lot of people would be like, "Yeah, I'm from Lexington Terrace," you <laughs> feel me? But you, you ain't from that Lexington really Terrace, and you don't know them yeah. buildings, you feel me? Them buildings that we had to live in, the elevators and rats and stuff run like that running around, you feel mm -hmm. me? Like that was one of the main reasons they got rid of the buildings. Like, but I actually was born and raised down there. You feel what I'm saying? But it was like as my career started, like I never knew I was going to be. Like, you get what I'm saying, where I am today or successful as I am today because, I mean, I grew up around boys. My passion was always, like, basketball before it was dirt bikes because I was basketball, then it was baseball, then I was always riding pedal bikes when it was time for me to, like, not in school or, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, so it was, like, 
bikes always was in my passion but once i got too advanced for pedal bikes i actually went on to dirt bikes and it was like yeah i had bikes i was buying bikes buying bikes buying bikes but i never had the 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 gut feeling to actually be willing to fall you get what i'm saying so it was like i wanted to do it so bad but it was like man i'm watching them fall you feel me people right. i'm growing up with like my homeboy meach i'm watching him fall so it's like damn yo, like i don't know my me take that yeah that's it like so it i brought bikes and stuff he like man you ain't, I ain't about to keep riding you around you about to learn just went down curl park and I honestly say from the beginning of March, by the end of March, I was willing. Damn. By April, I was clicking again. In the air. So it was like, it's something that I always wanted to do. I was scared to fall, but one thing I always knew was don't let go of that break. If you don't let go of that break, how you going to fall? You get what mm. I'm saying? If you, if you got control, then you knew what you was, you feel what I'm saying, heading for it. Like, but I didn't honestly fall until after... I learned how to willy. I felt like doing dumb you stuff. You trying to do like, and shit like this? Like, no. Oh, like, one time I actually needed a back tire on my CR85. So I'm coming down Fremont Street. You feel me? I'm coasting. One hand, the, the tire was messed up. Like, the ridges was messed up. It was real bald. But the ridges for me keep spinning out was down on one side. And it was up on one side. So I'm coasting. One hand, lean over. Oh, next thing you know, I'm sliding. I probably slid like four or five cars. And mm. then it was like, I couldn't even stop myself. Whereas though I just, when I looked, I just knew my head hit the car of a bumper. And then I, just, like, I was dazed. I go to get up. They're like, no, stay down, stay down. I'm like, like, and Man. I still wrote that day. Like, I, I had on white pants. I changed my pants after that. You feel what I'm saying? Changing. That was your first fall? It was my first big fall, but it was like, I done felt like ran into somebody on something. I'm coming down the street and people get excited when they see you and I, you jumped in front of me. So it was like, once you slam on the brakes, you feel what I'm saying? I'm sliding. So I slid into him and actually flipped over the handlebar. So it was like, I done ripped the, my half of my finger off. Like I done, I done been like three, three worst falls. Like, and the third one wasn't actually a fall. I actually got hit by the knockers. You feel what I'm saying? So when I got hit, I probably flew like, I don't even know how many feet in the air I was flying and it was like once I hit the ground I ain't come down on the ground regular I came down on my face and my shoulder so it was like they still was just sitting there and it was just so amazing to me how that like I was so hurt and they just sat there and got the car yeah the knockers and just got out and looked at me like got in a car poor dog that's the only reason why i kept my bike because i actually was hurt like i was bleeding from my the, the right hand on my nose i ripped seven inches of my tissue out my lip like knee messed up shoulder messed up like it, i was like and i i ain't have no energy to start the bike up i ain't had no cell phone on me because that's around the time when i was just starting to get nice and i wore sweatpants that day so it was like and they just left you there left me and they then. was chasing you yeah they was I, chasing but they say you're not even supposed to chase people when they're on the bikes right listen they do what they want when they come to these dirt bikes they act like these dirt bikes is, is you feel what i'm saying it's harming a lot of people or it keep a lot of people out the streets it's something that a, pe we love to do you get what i'm saying so it's like they they take out one the thing that make us feel free in baltimore because it's not a lot of things coming from baltimore and growing up in baltimore that makes you feel free 100 percent. because you growing up in baltimore a lot of people say well you ain't never been to shot wreck you get what i'm saying i feel like i haven't never been there no nah, baltimore but baltimore <laughs> you get what i'm saying like you don't physically got to be involved in nothing. You can be there when something happens and he say, she say, and then the wrong person hit and they run with it. And then now you hurt off of he say, she say, when you don't physically know what's going on. So you can't take the one thing in Baltimore that a lot of people focus on their freedom is riding dirt bikes. You get what I'm saying? Like, Let's talk about the culture though. Like, so, because it, like you said, it is like a culture and, and you have your own like little not cult but like group of people that ride bikes and that's all they do and you might think is disrupting the city whole time it's really like it's no different from a football team it's no exactly. different from a, a cheerleading club or whatever you want to call it you know what i'm saying because it brings y'all together and y'all do it together and that keep people off the street right uh, let's talk about the culture of it like how do you is it like you get nice and then you come around like hey i want to start riding y'all or they just adapt 
I mean, it was like, see, back in the day, it's different from now. Because, like, I, I can't honestly remember, like, how it was back in the day. I just knew that my cousin, you feel me, was dealing with somebody that was, you feel me, involved in the, the 12 o'clock boys. And then, you feel me, like, he came over one day and then I synced him and then, he, you feel me, I don't. You know you're yeah, I'm sure. riding with him and then, you feel me. Let's like, talk about the bully, though. How, what about the, um... So when you was riding with the Tuffer Cop boys, how was that? Because I feel like when you ride with them, you maybe don't understand the hype that they have, how the outside people look at the Tuffer Cop boys. Like, did you already understand? It was like, I knew about them, but I didn't physically like know. I just knew like, dang, like I'm actually riding with them. But it was like, people like, yo, you can willy? And I'm bluffing <laughs> like, yeah, I can willy. But I'm bluffing like right. they like show me something. I'm bluffing. I'm like, no, I can't really. You feel me? Like, and it was like back then. I was young, probably like 14, 15. I was young, so it was like I was I wasn't dressing how I dress now. I was wearing girl clothes, but I was a tomboy. Right. You get what I'm saying? So it was like more. Oh, that little girl on that big bikes back then. I'm 14 years old on a 125, mm. a KX 125. You feel me? So it was like I knew. So how, like. How did it, like, from your imagination or from what you, your perspective of the 12 o'clock boys, how did that even form? Like, who were the 12 o'clock boys to you? They was, they was like, it was like back then, it was a bunch of, we used to gang up and all ride pedal bikes. So it was like, oh, why they, they didn't pedal bike, you feel me? Like, back then it wasn't, it wasn't as far as like fame, we wasn't looking at it as like fame. It was so more of we was linking up to have fun, but we was nice at what we was doing. So it was like, dang, like we nice, but they nice, but they on dirt bikes doing it. You feel what I'm saying? Like I looked at them like, yo, I can be doing that. Like, and that's when the um, like, cause I used to do every Sunday at the park, or yeah. was that after? Like, when did that start? The Sundays at the uh, drill park? I think Sundays been going on for a while, but by me just coming in, I just started, you like, filling in, like, feel me? Like, the first time I actually rode with the pack, I was so excited. Like, we actually rode everywhere in the city. And remind you, I'm 14 years old, so I'm riding, and we everywhere. I'm just having the time of my life. Like, we, it's like you ride pedal bikes and you going through the city, but you riding dirt bikes, you get through the city and more neighborhoods faster without being tired. Mm. Like you don't got to pedal and pump up right. hills. All you got to use just chilling, family, like you just yeah. chilling. So it's like we got through so many neighborhoods and it was still daytime outside. Like by the time, like I'm, I'm used to ganging up with all the pedal bikes. You feel me? And then we, by the time we come back from all the routines, it's nighttime. Like, yeah. I'm tired. like <laughs> man, it's nighttime. Like, listen, it's time to go in the house. Niggas had curfews back then and stuff like that. Like, no. Nah, so during this time, did that's that's did you meet Chino back then? Was he riding at this time or not yet? See, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think that me and Chino actually got cool as far as like him being who he is and then me becoming who I am. Me and Chino knew each other since kids. Like, Damn. like. I'm talking about as I'm telling you, age fourteen. We probably me and Chino probably knew each other probably since we was at least like eleven. Damn. So he was riding bikes when you he was riding bikes before you. Yeah. He, he was, was already with the he was, about? he was already riding dirt bikes. He already had rolled with the pack. It's just that he wasn't stable like with bikes, but he can get anybody bike that he wanted. And back then, when I first seen him ride, I'm like, he nice like. Like, I used to be like, man, he gonna fall. But it's like, when he got on there, it was like, he just was out of control and loose and he knew what he was doing. It was like, like, I knew he was gonna be big. You feel what I'm saying? And then he just took off, like. How the fuck, off. but it's like, cause even that, how do you think you're gonna be, like, in your mind, riding dirt bikes in Baltimore, right? When you think you're gonna be big, what do you see? Before you even seen the Chino and MMG situation, right? Right. Do you think, all right, I'm gonna go to, What's the lot? What is it called? The across motor? The motocross. motocross yeah, it? like on dirt riding. Yeah, is that dirt. what you see yourself, envision yourself doing? Or like, that, what do you see yourself I ain't doing even going to sit here a lot. Like, a lot of people think, don't think, like, dreaming is, like, true. But back then, I, uh, bikes has always been my passion. Like, like I said, like, if I wasn't playing basketball, if I, ain't, if I was going outside, I was getting on a bike. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was like, damn, like, I started having these dreams. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that I was willing, like, like I was coming through and I was doing tricks and stuff. Like back then, I didn't know what the tricks was called, but mm -hmm. I kept having these dreams and kept having these dreams. Like, 
I always knew that I wanted to do this, so I just got to put that fear behind me and do it. And I wasn't never doing it for the fame. I was doing it because that's what I grew up around all my life. All right. my life, I grew up around that. That's what I wanted to but be. But I'm trying to figure out what is it that you see. Like, all right, so play, I'm playing part one. I see myself playing professional football, right? You play basketball from since you're young, and you see yourself playing in the NBA. What is it that you see yourself at, at that age? What is it that you saw yourself doing, like, to be big? See, back then it wasn't, we wasn't doing it to be big. It was, we was doing it because we, that's something that's that. That's just what you love yeah, to do. Yeah, that's what we love to and do. And then everything else just came. It like, just came, like, far as, like, me riding dirt bikes. I went to L.A. When I went to L.A. back in 2016, that's when I first started acting. I never wanted to act, you feel me? Like, be more Snoop used to always ask me, like, she used to call me back in 2013, like, you ain't never think about acting, acting, where is that? Mm -hmm. Like, no, oh, I'm like, I'm, I just ride dirt bikes, like, you feel me? Like, but back then i was still young i'm doing something that i love to do you feel what i'm saying like i, I felt like i was blessed with a talent because it's rare that you want to see a female pick up a dirt bike yeah. and do with and these guys up, yeah no nah, you be wild too so like, like it's it's like it's just crazy it's like it still be unbelievable to me but it was like once i went to cali i'm like man i can't i can't sit back and put my future on hold not knowing where it's going to take me at because all I want to do is ride dirt bikes like I always knew that I can act and then when I started getting into the acting back in 2016 2017 that's when you did the first movie no or 2016 is when I started doing the skits with smooth okay and then 2017 is when I got a call about the lost kings and I was the main character and things like that and I just was like how was that shit? I, like I ain't gonna lie like I used to always think like, how, how they rem like when I got the packet, like the script, like man, listen, how do they remember this? Like, <laughs> I was so afraid. It was like, all right, yeah, when I went to the meeting, I was with it. But when it was actually time, I'm like, all right, I'm studying. But it was like, I was so more afraid of me not knowing the lines. But it was like, when I got there, smooth, you feel me, was an actor before me or a comedian, whatever you want to call it, before me. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was doing that before me and I actually was helping him with his lines. So it was like, it's, it's hard for me to not remember a line. Like, it's like I learned my lines and other people's lines. So if me and you on a TV show together and I, I got the script, and we having a conversation. I'm gonna know your lines and my lines. Right. I'm not just gonna know my lines because you gotta know their lines to so know you when can. you when it's yeah. your turn. Like a lot of people just know their lines. A lot of people just learn their lines, but nobody never taught me that way. That's how I taught myself. Like I gotta teach myself the way that I feel like I'm comfortable with so that I can take myself further than what I am now. So I just, when I studied it, any script or any conversation I was in with anybody, not just my lines, I knew their lines. If it was a full people in the conversation, I knew everybody's lines. You get what I'm saying? It right. was like you sit there and read it. That's just like you reading a book that you really like and you remember didn't half that, of the story. Didn't that movie come out in like a, a theater? A theater yeah, or it actually came out in a theater. Uh, I forgot what theater it was, but it came out. I forgot. How was that though? Like, so when you after you done. And you on a big screen and shit, like, how, how did the, the city respond to that? How did you like, respond to it? Shit? It was going through a film festival for so long. So I oh, so you already, it was already done. Yeah, like, I, I had to go to Virginia to, like, that was, like, the city. So I sat, I synced it before then, but it wasn't on a big screen. And it was, like, when I went to Virginia, it was, like, people who didn't know me, once they seen me, they was just, like, y'all had the best film out of the all the screens like all the movies and films that played on the screen it was taking pictures and stuff with us then we had the, the baltimore when you feel me i forgot what spot it was at and then the baltimore it was just like a bunch of a bunch of baltimore love you get what i'm saying a bunch of people who wanted to see you win like a bunch of people who didn't know me came out mm -hmm. and you feel me like you gonna be somebody like you gonna be big you feel what i'm saying like i i always thought like when my father passed away, like I went downhill, like I like I like I used to like to fight, like like it was bad, like my mother couldn't control me, like I was just like man, whatever. My father not here, you feel me? Like you know, you can tell me he was my best friend. What you what you gonna tell me that he wasn't gonna tell me? Like like a lot of people when I finally came out and like I was gay. You feel what I'm saying? Like that I liked that another female. It was like how your father? How you think your father gonna feel? And it was like. 
a parent know they child. So evidently, he he already knew. Like I wasn't never playing with Barbie dolls and mm -hmm. things like that. So it was like a parent know they child. You feel what I'm saying? Like so, like niggas were treating you different once you came out and said you like you was gay. I guess. I was in denial for a long time. Like people that I like, I used to be a little kid running around basketball putting, yo, you don't like curls. I ain't like no girls. I'm playing, I don't even like no girls. Oh, what? Stop playing with me. Like, as you get offensive, and then it's like the boy that used to always tell me that, he was like older. He went to jail and came home and was like, didn't I tell you? And I'm like, yeah, you told me. <laughs> like, back then I'm young, I'm in denial. I'm, I'm worried about how people going to feel like if I'm going to blow up like oh she gay like oh she like girls like that's not right you know what I'm saying it's crazy that you said that because like even back then you see this this cycle of like just grown ups or older people sexualizing children because that's right. not even that shouldn't even be a thought in our head looking at a little kid talking about they're going to be gay or they're going to like girls because like we shouldn't even care that's some if you think about it now that's some pervert some perverted shit like we're looking at a little kid telling them or they gonna like girls or boys, but like that shit is weird. And back then, I used to get so offended because it was like I was so young, and my father passed away, and it was like only thing I was worried about, like if you said something wrong to me, like you feel me, or you done something, we fighting. Like right. that's the Baltimore culture. I just like, feel like I feel like since they young and they they treat us not to be a bitch, right? In Baltimore, right? But I feel like honestly that you lose more not quote unquote being a bitch than you gain from it because. You want to go around showing everybody you're not a bitch, and then you fuck yourself over. Now you're getting arrested. You're in situations where you're getting shot, or you got people that's just not that's around you, just not doing the right thing. And I just feel like that really fucks us up more than it helps us. Like, granted, we should always supposed to protect ourselves and carry ourselves respect and require respect from everybody. But the word, the, the phrase, not being a bitch, I feel like that really it fucks us over in the long run. Yeah, and it's like. I'm going to go in and speak on the behalf of, like, me being shot. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't ever in a million years think that something like this would happen to me. Not by me just being a female, by me just not being in the streets, period. Just because I hang down a certain neighborhood, you get what I'm saying? I don't... It's people I'm not cool with down my neighborhood, but you feel me? Like, but I still go down there, but it ain't no animosity towards us. You get what I'm saying? But I don't know what this person got going on. I don't... You feel me? Like, and... It's not how it was back in the day. It's like neighborhoods, anybody just coming in neighborhoods now saying they from, I don't like, oh, I'm from Lexington. I don't know you. You feel right. what I'm saying? Like, but that's not my block. I don't own that block. So I can't physically tell nobody where to hang at. And I don't care who hang down there. You get what I'm saying? But it's like when I started doing big things, you get what I'm saying? People used to always tell me, like, oh, you bigger than that neighborhood, you feel me? Like, your, your neighborhood is one of the deadliest blocks. And I'm like, I was born and raised down there. That's all I know, you feel what I'm saying? It's like, all right, you feel me? Like, maybe I got to listen to what they saying, you feel me? But it was so more of, like, I was worried about my friends, you get what I'm saying? Well, my so-called friends, people that I was thinking that was my friends, I was worried about... Like, I'm going to be lonely as shit if I ain't got no, no friends. I'm, what I'm going to do, you feel me? Like, I ain't finna go post up in nobody else's hood. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, why go post up in somebody else's hood if you can just hang in your own neighborhood? But I was looking at it as, in the wrong way. Like, people who was telling me this stuff been through different si situations, you get what I'm saying? And I was just looking at it because I was still young. But it's like, after being shot, you get what I'm saying? That changed my whole everything like it made me appreciate life more like i went i never knew depression was real until after you get what i'm saying i've been shot so it was like a lot of people knew that i got shot but a lot of people didn't believe it because i didn't post it and a lot of people it's like this instagram thing a lot of people take it too serious Oh, because I ain't post on Instagram I'm in protected custody. Like, why do I got to be in protected custody? Because I didn't post nothing on Instagram. Like, that's not the hype that I want. Me mm -hmm. being shy, I'm not happy about that. But that's God. That's something God's plan, you feel me? Like, because I've been getting signs like, stay from down there. You feel me? You bigger than that. And I wasn't listening, but I still go down there. And then I, you feel me? I get involved in something I don't have, I have a clue about. And now I'm hurt, you feel what I'm saying? Going through depression. Like, the, so, like, like you, you. Was that a random situation or like? It's like, I honestly can't even tell you what it was about. It's he say, she say. Like, I done 
her he say she say said this or he said this or she said that and I'm like yo y'all telling me stuff about myself but I don't know I never even you feel me physically been involved in no type of stuff like that and y'all telling me like this person said this about you and I'm like that person never even knew me that person never even seen me so how can this person tell you that I'm physically doing this like how can you that's just like you 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 see me around my first impressions I gave you like you like you said when we first got on here like how can you physically say that's just like you tell somebody yeah like I don't like her because I heard but have you been around her do you physically know her you get what I'm saying like anybody that know me can tell you I got a big heart I'm willing to help anybody this this can be my last outfit and if you in danger you ain't got no clothes I'm gonna give you the shirt off my back like that's just me if I'm eating you gonna eat like I never been the type to see nobody struggle like no matter what it was like if I can help only, even if it's only advice I'm trying to help because that's just the kind of heart that I have like I can't help that I'm kind hearted it's like I'm not gonna stop being kind hearted I just gotta be smart about situations because me being kind hearted got me hurt actually being kind hearted trying to help and save someone else's life got me hurt so you, you got shot trying to save somebody else I mean like I could honestly say that, like, just because I'm from a neighborhood, like, I don't be knowing what be going on. I'm not involved in the streets. Like, I don't want to be involved in the streets. Like, yeah, I grew up a rough life, but that's growing up in Baltimore. Like, everybody don't got it good. Like, everybody not that, oh, I grew up and my mother had this type of job. You feel me? My mother was a single mother, you get what I'm saying, with two kids. So it was like... I wasn't never raised on hate. I wasn't never raised on wrong. I was always loving and caring, like, no matter what. Like, man, you can have a falling out, not even really knowing each other, but at the end of the day, I sit back like, man, it wasn't even, I'm not going to sit here and hold no grudge. Like, if you want to hold a grudge, that's up to you. But I physically don't hold grudges towards nobody, like, none of that. Why you think is that, like, the people that don't think like that, right? Because I feel like I think the same way, but it, I mean just being real in reality is the people that don't think that way you know what i'm saying and like i don't know how the situation happened with when you got shot right but i'm trying to figure out what would make somebody feel that way towards you that's what i'm saying right. I, I can't physically tell you why a person would feel as though that they gotta physically hurt me because I'm not trying to physically hurt nobody. I'm not doing nothing to try to physically hurt nobody. You get what I'm saying? That's not me at all. I hate death. 2019 has been like so rough for me. Like I lost so many people I love, so many people I cared about, so many people I seen. Like I seen the vision. Like man, they gonna be big. They got a talent, and it's like just seeing all these people go. You get what I'm saying? Like yo, that's messed up. Like why, why? Why life got to be like this? And then, like, after me getting shot, I just kept questioning myself. Now I don't even question myself, questioning God. Like, don't question God. Like, I even told, like, my second mother, you feel me? Like, I don't want to do this no more. Like, I don't even, I don't, I'm, I'm done. Like, she, like, you got to think about it. This is a lesson, you feel me? God put his, you feel me? God doing this for a reason. He wanted you to see who was your real friend who was there during the hard times. You get what I'm saying? So it was like... Her saying what she's saying, she actually had to break it down. Like, at the end of the day, you're a female. You never been through nothing like this, so you don't know what to do. You're losing your mind. And like I said, depression is real. Like, like I, I wasn't eating, I, always thinking, and I just kept asking myself, like, why me? You feel me? Like, what do I do to deserve for somebody to hurt me? Like, what, what do I do? Like... Nobody can't say I physically did nothing to them because I don't do nothing to nobody. I don't want to do nothing to nobody. Like, even after being hurt, you get what I'm saying? Like, I just want to be a successful person. Niggas just want to survive, live, like, you know what I'm saying? I want to help another young female or another young little boy that's growing up who looking up to me to not having to go through what I went through. You feel what I'm saying? Because when a person telling you, you feel me, what they telling you, you got to listen. Like, they telling you for a reason. It was like, being shot made me look at life totally different. Like, and then, you, like you had a friend that died, too. A yeah. A friend, uh, Tay-Tay. Yeah. What, like, how'd that make you feel? Like, Tay-Tay, I met Tay-Tay through one of my ex-girlfriends. You get what I'm saying? And, man, him was like, fam I, I looked at him like he was family. Like, I learned how to willy before him. So, when he started learning how to willy, you get what I'm saying? It was so more of... Uh, 
yo, how you how you know how like how you learn how to tune? I'm like, man, it's just all in your breast. And it was like once he got nice, he got nice, but he always been one of my favorite little youngins. You get what I'm saying? You know how you got that favorite little like yeah. people like who your favorite dirt bike rider, you feel me? Like I knew Chino before all of that. He always been my favorite dirt bike rider because how wild he was, you get what I'm saying? And Tay Tay, he was another wild one. Like I loved it, that little kid, like he was my own blood, like he was like I loved it, that kid like he was my own it's, flesh and blood. It's almost like the city, if you let it, can really like strip away all the love that you have for something because it just tear you down. Yeah, it really will tear you down if, if like if you're not strong enough, it'll make you want to quit that shit for real. Right. Whatever you're doing, and it's like it's sad, and I'm trying to figure out how can we get out of that situation. Like how can we persevere through these feelings coming from Baltimore for real? It's like I don't even know the answer to that because at the being shot, it was like a lot of people in my family. I got a real big family. A lot of people in my family look at me like they don't. They like I'm their favorite because it's like I got people in my family that can sing. People that aren't like, and then I'm acting and then physically riding dirt by like athletic. You get what I'm saying? So it's like I'm their favorite. So it's like when it happened to me, they like, all right, we're not gonna tell your grandfather. But it was like everybody didn't get the message, like, don't tell our grandfather. And then somebody told him two days later, you get what I'm saying? He had a mild heart attack and he didn't come back from it. They had to wind up amputating one of his legs. You get what I'm saying? His his brain, I don't know what it's called, but his brain, his his mind played tricks on him. One minute he knew who he is, the next minute he don't. Mm, you feel time. what I'm saying? So it's like when we go down to the hospital, we thinking that he going to come back. And they tell us, like, listen. It's nothing else we can do for him. Like his blood is not pumping, flowing through his body how it's supposed to flow through. Right. The the stuff that help your blood flow through your body been failed on him. So it's like he know who you is and then he, he don't. You get what I'm saying? Then on top of him dealing with he dealing with my grandmother been on her deathbed like she been in the hospital for almost going on three years now. So how the hell do you deal with all it? Like it's it's like. There's a lot of shit going on. I don't. That's the thing. Like I tell people you. I'm alright a lot of times. Like I actually tell people I'm alright a lot of times, but I physically don't be alright. It's like I'm just trying to be this tough person that I know I can be, but it's still eating me up in the inside. And then it's like as soon as I start feeling better, here it is. I go home. Me and my mother go home. We find her husband on the floor. You get what I'm saying? And now his heart rate dropped me cold blue in the hospital. He about to die. And it's like, he in ICU. So it's like, it's like seeing my mother going through what she going through. You get what I'm saying? And it's like, it scared her to death going through what I was going through. And it's like, I'm physically still going through it. Like, I, I get by day by day, but it's like, it really eat me up that something like that happened to me. And then it's like, you can't even deal with it on your own because of the, the social status that you got right like you don't want to post on social media then as soon as you don't post on social media you got everybody talking you know what I'm saying like some rumors. rumors it's like that shit is a lot for one person bro and then it's just crazy like did you try to talk to a therapist for this shit or anything like a lot of people been telling me like you just need to go see you need to go see a therapist and I'm just like it's like yeah, I want to do that, but I know they're going to try to put me on medicine like how they did when my father passed away. And and it's not going to have me in my right state of mind. Like, I can't be on these certain type of medications that they're giving me to keep me calm and keep me to not, you feel me, think how I'm thinking or go through depression. How, how can I remember a script if I'm physically taking these medicines and I can't remember nothing? Like, that's going involved in my career, so it's like... I deal with it the best way I can. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The best way I can. I feel like it's, it got to be another way for it, like without the medicine. But again, I don't know because I'm not a therapist. You know what I'm saying? Right. But hopefully somebody can reach out to you because I feel like, you know what I wish people would do? You know how people give away free clothes and shit like that? You know right. how people do uh, all type of charities and shit right. like that? You never see it as, as big as fucking anxiety is right now they talking about it as big as like mental health is right. they talk about it right now i've never seen nobody offer a therapy session for free yet mm -hmm. uh it might be somebody out there doing it but i haven't seen it yet and i feel uh -huh. like instead of people giving some clothes away instead of doing that offer some time to somebody you know what i'm saying like offer somebody a free session or a free couple sessions to really give back in that way um again i don't know if people doing it but 
I feel like that would be dope. Um, and then you have a unique story. Right. And you can really, if we can see that transition, it can really show people that came up under you or that, that watch you, that, 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 that look up to you, how important therapy is and how it can work. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I, that's just my, my opinion. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But through all the bad shit, you got some good shit going on too. Like, you, you working on a, a second movie? Or yeah, it's it's done. It's and done actually, already. Uh, the movie I got I got over to uh, Salt Lake City, that's Utah, in January for one of the uh, movie premieres. But it actually uh, is nationwide. Come April tenth, twenty twenty. Oh shit! Congrats. So, thank you. How man. was that? Was it easier because you did the first one, or it was like I knocked it out. Like I knew all my lines. You feel what I'm saying? Like it was. It acting is actually fun. Like you meet so many people that you'll never think you'll meet like when you were a kid you had dreams about little certain things but you don't think like how i'm gonna be when you don't never think as a kid how i'm gonna be when i get older you right. don't never think that you dream about whatever stuff that you want or something that you want to do that's what you're dreaming about as a kid you don't think about like i wonder when i turn it how i'm gonna be right. you feel like you don't really put like, an age on it you really don't. Just, you have these dreams and then as you as you get older when you start to fulfill these dreams and you start to walk in these footsteps it's like damn i'm really here like i'd be still shocked at my own self that i met half of the people that i met like i done had my own commercial on a and e interview i done modeled for gucci i done modeled for g-star i done been on billboards and stuff like that for g-star like that's huge now then you got me posting you and shit yeah like, like i actually met me through Chino, he he is a he is really motivation. Like he is a a a I'm gonna say a young billionaire, but at the same time he don't carry himself as an oh I'm this I'm he this guy like with a regular nigga. Yeah, like, that's he, why I fuck with him the most. Like, like he encouraged he he like to see a lot of young people. You feel me? Going through what he went through in his struggle, he like to see a lot of young people become somebody yeah. you get what i'm saying he he a lot of stuff like a lot of people a lot of talent go unnoticed because it's not a lot of people like me mm. so it's like when a person pass away it's oh such and such was going to sign this person this person is passed away like why wasn't this person been noticed before such and such died like mm -hmm. why do it take for a person to die for a person to say oh i was going to do this for this person like this just do it like that's why a lot of talent go but unnoticed you know they say it's uh, a waste they say death is like the biggest marketing uh tool right now like honestly the biggest marketing tool right now is death because people music spike when they pass right and that's why i feel like a lot of these these music companies these record labels they not really taking forth the extra step to help these artists out even when it comes to mental health when it comes to uh substance abuse uh popping all these pills they're not trying to help because they know that if these artists die that's a bigger check for them that's a bigger bag for them they're not going to yeah. the stop they not it's fucked up but i mean that's just the world we in right now but like i said yes. man, you got a lot of positive stuff and i feel like honestly like I know we do interviews on cameras and shit, but like just being genuine, like if you ever need somebody to talk to, you can hit me up. Right. Um, if I got any resources I can help you with, like just with like this therapist, I don't mind helping, you know what I'm saying? And right. the fact that you can sit here and be open enough and transparent right. enough to talk about it. Cause a lot it's, of people going through some shit that they ain't they don't wanna talk I about. I think a lot of people scared to open up because a lot of people scared to be judged. But when mm -hmm. you don't physically do nothing to nobody and a tragedy like this happened to you, why not open up? Mm -hmm. Why not say what you feel? Because you know you ain't physically do nothing wrong. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, why not open up? I think a lot of people just be scared of like, just the unknown. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gonna have their opinion. Facts. No matter if you doing good or bad, everybody's gonna have their opinion about you. Everybody going, oh, I like this. I don't like her. Why you don't like her? And it's just something about it. I don't like. It's just you get what I'm saying. It's always gonna be something. So, it's it's not. It's hard to make everybody in the world like you. It's it's impossible. So like, how do you feel about the the phrase of like? You have to move out your home city to make it. Like your hometown, you got to move out your hometown to make it. How do you feel? Now that this is happening and everything is going on, how do you feel about that? Leaving is like when you got a talent, you get what I'm saying? You don't want it to go unnoticed, you get what I'm saying? Or become noticed by death. You got to leave Baltimore. That's the only way. Baltimore is like, 
Baltimore really would be unstoppable if everyone everyone would stop hating on one another. If everyone come together, I swear Baltimore would be unstoppable. It's so much talent, but it go unnoticed because the talent is dying. The good people is dying, and if you get what I'm saying, like, it's, and you just be sitting here like, yo, it's a lot of talent. That's that not like so. Like, let me, let's we gotta be careful, right? Because I feel like it's not just Baltimore. It's really your hometown. Right. Because even Boosie was talking about it, right? So like anytime you're being successful and you're getting bigger than your hometown, people that know you, they always like you said, opinions are like assholes. Everybody got one, right? So like right. everybody wanna put their two cents in, everybody wanna feel like they coming up or everybody wanna feel like they can take something away from somebody. So right. like I don't wanna just say Baltimore because Baltimore do has is, is good, right? Like you came from Baltimore. I came right. from Baltimore like shit. Keenan came from Baltimore. Chino right. came from Baltimore. Right. Monique came. Like, we can name so many other people that's nationwide. Just hilarious. So, Baltimore breeds talent. But because Baltimore is so, you know, so unique, a lot of people stay in Baltimore because we love it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's hard to make it out of Baltimore. And I ain't so, gonna lie. I felt like yeah. I wouldn't ever leave Baltimore. I'm like, I don't care how far I get. Like, I love Baltimore. That's that's what made me. You feel and what I think I'm that's what really, I think that's where we go wrong. Honestly, like, because I feel like the death and things like that, the deaths and things, it happens everywhere. And everybody hometown, yeah, when you're course. from there, people yeah. want to hate on you, right? Right. But because Boston was so unique, right, we just don't want to leave. And I think exactly. that's what happens. Like, exactly. we, a lot of us downplay our celebrity because when we when we make it to everybody else, we don't make it to ourselves, right? Right. So when we when we're not making it to ourselves, we still doing what we do. As if we was regular. Exactly. Because we think we're regular. Like standing on a corner. Yeah. Like, why is you keep but going we can't look, stand on a corner if you got all these successful things going but on? But we can't we can't look we can't downplay our celebrity like that. We gotta understand who we are when we are that person and move in that light, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you if you're if you lit, you're gonna do what let people do. Mm -hmm. Just that, as an analogy, right? And right. let people ain't bother being in the hood every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I so feel like it. it just and then it ain't no money in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't no, it's no, it's no possibilities in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't really make it there. So it's like, we really got to get out, take those steps to benefit ourselves, then come back and give to our community. Because right. if we stay there, we can't give our community something that we don't got to give. Even with my freestyle platform, like, people, everybody in the city want to be on a platform. And I can't get everybody, because if I just get Baltimore, it's just going to be a Baltimore platform. Now, guess what? I can't give you an opportunity that you ain't have because now I don't have an opportunity that you don't have, if that makes right, sense. Right. I got to get out and expand my platform because once I expand, expand my platform, when I come back and get somebody from Baltimore, the other people that I expanded my platform to, they're going to see you. Right. And that's how we grow. Right. Not just staying in Baltimore, but like, I feel like it's definitely a hometown thing. And um, I definitely pray for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Appreciate it. My family, we sent, uh, we got you in our prayers, and like I said, you always is a genuine person. So I like, it's it's sad that this had to happen, but at the end of the day, you here, right? So that's gonna make you stronger, right? Like, so like, I don't want to come out hard, but I don't think it's sad because like you, you yeah, here, yeah. and like you, I'm you, here for a reason, right? You know what I'm saying? Because it was my time to go out and went. hundred percent. And now I you, went. you got you, you wound up on somebody that didn't get shot. Like I didn't get shot. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how I feel. You right. can teach me something. Right. You can teach these kids that's in the city something because they haven't been through what you've been through. Right. And so like I feel like that just make you stronger, make it better. Like to be honest. So like um again I appreciate you for calling me no to do problem, this no um problem. and much success I hope the movie do numbers I hope you get in another it's going to do numbers it's you definitely going to do numbers I got confidence in that already like, we all got listen man we all rooting for you like you gonna have a couple bad apples out of the bunch you know what I'm saying but we can't let that don't let that shit tell you now like don't another let that shit thing, stress you I had to learn to put myself first so it's like now that I ain't got to worry about friends or I ain't got to like, because you hear, no matter if you got friends or not, you still hear that he say, she say. Mm -hmm. But it's your choice to, you calling me saying what another person said, what did you say to this person? If you my friend, it's nothing that you can company, tell yeah. me about my friend that's going to have me having doubts about my friend. So if you calling me, telling me what another person said, what did you say to this person when they said this? Mm -hmm. Why I ain't saying click it's nothing for us to talk about like well, why did not you doing this. Coming like, to you? that's yeah. what i'm saying like I, that's not what i'm doing he says she i ain't i don't i'm well, not we're gonna, we gonna put all that shit behind us yeah all right he says she say yeah. shout out to real friends of 2020 yeah. shout out to genuine relationships you know what i'm yeah. saying like 
fuck all that other shit. Yeah, straight up. You already know, man. Uh, yeah. Willie Queen. Yeah. Jay Ho. Right. Let's get this straight. Yeah.